Hey guys, welcome back! In mid-1997 I upgraded from my factory IBM 486 DOS PC to a custom-made AMD K6 paired with a pretty standard S3 Verge graphics card. Soon I realized that I was missing something, something that would breathe life and immense power into the 3D gaming scene on this particular platform. This is my story, let's take a look! Launched on November 1996, 3DFX's Voodoo Graphics consisted of a 3D-only card that required a VGA cable passed through from a separate 2D card to the Voodoo, which then connected to the display. Voodoo Graphics revolutionized personal computer graphics nearly overnight and these cards were sold by a large number of companies. Orchid Technologies was first to market with the $299 Orchid Righteous 3D, a board noted for having mechanical relays that clicked when the chipset was in use. Later revisions utilized solid-state relays in line with the rest of the vendors. The card was followed by many others from, as said, a bunch of different tech companies and the one I got was the Diamond Multimedia's Monster 3D, a 3DFX Voodoo 1 PCI card with 4 MB of dedicated RAM. Along with the cards came bundled a pretty good selection of games, from where I must highlight Formula 1 developed by Bizarre Creations and published by Cygnosis that blew my mind the first time I played it with my brand new Voodoo card. Needless to say that my life as a gamer changed forever and my PlayStation ended up in a drawer. That apparently simple card took my gaming experience to a whole new level. Having a specialized 3D API was arguably both the highlight and the downfall for 3DFX. The Glide API combined with Voodoo hardware truly enhanced the gaming experience and during the short few years that Glide reigned supreme, several games based its 3D implementation solely in this proprietary API. So and with that in mind, let me showcase and talk about a few of my favorite games that I used Glide back in late 90s. Let's face it, the racing genre hugely benefited from these 3D accelerated cards, so when going back to Formula 1, it was my first experiment on my upgraded system and its soundtrack simply goes wherever I go. So good! With the PlayStation version offering a couple of songs from Steve Vai and Joe Satriani, both sadly absent from this PC release, cause those two artists were under the Sony record label umbrella. Besides all that, with Formula 1 I didn't have a way of comparison. I needed to try out Tomb Raider and Carmageddon with a 3DFX patch that would come bundled on practically every cover mounted CD found on the many magazines that everyone was buying during that period. From that choppy frame rate and huge pixels, I was presented with this smooth character and environment animations. It was indeed a huge leap forward. Console gaming was doomed, <clears throat> just one of those voodoo cards would cost as much or even more than a gaming console. <laughs> ok, never mind, let's go through some of my favorites from back in the day. Jumping right to Carmageddon, another one that I played a ton prior to buying my Monster 3DFX card and then, with the help of a small file, the game was totally transformed. Needless to say that I got hooked big time, even more! That apparently simple accelerated card breathed a new life into my system and gaming on it now reached the stratosphere. Obviously that I was also addicted to Carmageddon 2, Carpocalypse now, but not as much. That first impact was way less than on its older brother. I guess that it only grabbed me for its soundtrack that featured four Iron Maiden amazing songs. Strangely enough, that simple card was responsible for my return to the one-on-one -on -one fighting genre with Mortal Kombat 4. To my eyes, it was a totally different experience. 
It was the first in the series to use 3D graphics and was the last one to have an arcade release. And besides Mortal Kombat 4, I was somehow hooked also to Battle Arena Toshinden. This was one of the first fighting games to boast polygonal characters in a 3D setting and I was somehow attracted to that concept. It premiered the sidestep maneuver, which is credited for taking the genre into true 3D. I recall it being promoted as a PlayStation exclusive and a Saturn killer, but it ended also being ported to Sega system besides the PC and Game Boy. Deadly Ray. Oh, ring out. Yeah. Now for something different. Incoming was another game that had the power to hypnotize me because of its advanced graphics and sound. <laughs> advanced for the time, obviously. The objective was simple, to stop an alien invasion. For that, we have a number of vehicles available armed with primary and eventually secondary weapons. Three game modes are present being the campaign mode, the more interesting to play. It wasn't that much of a game to be honest, but as said, the visual and audio effects were what really grabbed me, and many of you I'm sure. And something I will always recall is the impact that Half-Life had in my group of friends. We would talk, discuss and share stuff between us related with the game that everything else was irrelevant. And I believe that every single one of you played it, so <laughs> let's move on. POD, also known as Planet of Death, is yet another racing game, this time around developed by Ubisoft. <laughs> what do you know? A good racing game by Ubisoft. This one is set in a distant future and on one of Jupiter's moons that witnessed a mining accident that unleashed a deadly fungus. To escape, we have to race other survivors in a series of tournaments. The winner gets the chance to get out of there, leaving the defeated opponents to die. <laughs> what a plot! Curiously, the very first version of POD came bundled as a OEM version with computers using Intel Pentium or Pentium 2 MMX processors and did not support 3DFX cards. A later version was released that featured more tracks and cars and finally support for the 3DFX Voodoo 1 chipset, along with network play, with patches coming later for the Voodoo 2 and non-3DFX chipsets via Direct3D. From Iguana Entertainment came Two Rock Dinosaur Hunter, based on a comic book series of the same name, and it was seen by myself as Doom mixed with Tomb Raider. And that mixture was so much fun, I was truly addicted to it. If I recall correctly, it was the game that brought acclaim to the surface for a little longer. The Nintendo 64 version was a huge seller, but this PC version didn't receive the same praise. Even so, it was a pretty damn cool adventure. I don't know about you, but I will always relate Ultimate Race Pro with power VR boards and not 3D FX's. It was a basic racer, but incredibly fun to play. I just can't explain it. It's a weird sensation. It's a sort of evolution from what we had with Daytona USA at the arcades, but now at home and with a million times better sensation of accomplishment. <laughs> Whatever that means. It's hard to comprehend, but that's how I felt back then. As for Screamer 2, it was yet another that I struggled to play without an accelerator cart. 3DFX support was added a few months after the release of the game, also in the form of a patch, and a few years later bundled within this injection pack that besides the complete and full original Screamer and Screamer Rally, 
offer the Screamer 2 upgrade add-on for those who already purchased the full game. Feel free to check my episode on the history of the Screamer series from the developer Milestone that is still around creating amazing video games for all racing fans. Now and after the very first Motor Racer, I simply had to put my hands on Motor Racer 2. Both these games can nowadays be so unforgiving with their awkward hit detection and hasty ups and downs. Even so, they were my go-to motorcycle games back in the day. Uh, until Motocross Madness arrives, <laughs> what happened right about the same time Motor Racer 2 came out. Even so, Motor Racer 2 offered more tracks than its predecessor, a level editor, extra detailed textures and a faster frame rate. Oh, I almost forgot about Redline Racer. <laughs> oh man, the hours spent on this one. So, and along with Motor Racer, this was another of my go-to motorcycle games back in the day. And you know what? It was developed by Criterion Games, yeah, that's right. The guys later responsible for the hugely acclaimed Burnout series. I could go on and on and on, but you guys have other stuff to watch and to do, so I'll leave it here. But if you wanna see more PC related stuff back from late 90s and early 2000s, give me an heads up down in the comments section below or simply browse the channel. If you've enjoyed this video, consider supporting the channel monetarily through Patreon at patreon.com slash it's a pixel thing or using the thanks button below. To keep up with what's going on with the channel, check all my social media stuff by clicking on the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in my next video. Cheers!